All right. Thanks for joining me on this um, obviously never-ending quest to understand human nature, but I'm really excited about doing this series. I have a lot of big series. I have a lot of big plans. So let's see how many of them we can accomplish. Let's go. Okay, hopefully that worked. Look, I got one of those fancy lights. You can see the ring in the in the reflection of my glasses. Uh, my one of my neighbors was leaving uh, and getting rid of a bunch of stuff. So we'll see if this works. I don't know. Um, also, the sound quality. I know it's like complete garbage sometimes. I forget that I have this, but I actually don't even know if it helps. It, it is helping if it helps. If it sounds any better when I use this versus when I don't. So if you notice that it does or does not, you can definitely let me know in the comments, and I'll see what else I can think of. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not, I'm a millennial. I'm not tech savvy. I, I know those are contradictory, but here we are. So first uh, video of this book and we are going to discuss Confucianism and how it portrays human nature. I have a little fluffy tail here. She, she'll probably jump up here. Maybe. We'll see. So I don't really know much about this perspective like prior to reading this section of the book. So Let's see what new things I can learn and and if I can figure out how to use my own laptop. Okay, okay, we're doing it, we got this. So first, a Confucian understanding of the universe. Remember in the book it's broken up into four sections, which I can tell you what they are right now. So a background metaphysical understanding of the universe and humanity's place in it is number one. A theory of human nature in the narrower sense of some distinctive general claims about human beings, human society, and the human condition. Three, a diagnosis of some typical defect in human beings of what tends to go wrong in human life and society. And four, a prescription or ideal of how human life should be lived, typically offering guidance to individuals and human society. And our beautiful Duchess just made a little, uh, what is that called? Cameo, I guess? I don't know. Okay. So, the summary of Confucianism that this book provides is based on the early central ideas of Confucius compiled into a text called Analects. Obviously, like any encompassing worldview or ideology, Confucianism is complex and multifaceted. Also, it's debated how much of Analects is direct teachings from Confucius versus, versus speaking hard for me a lot of times actually um, versus later additions and interpretations so according to this book Confucius never really provided a theory of the universe as much as a theory of humankind so what they do say is um, he is noted as saying things such as you're not even able to serve men how can you serve the spirits and you do not even know life how can you understand death so Confucius believed in a universal force that acts in our lives, on our lives as humans, um, that was separated into two categories. So the decree of heaven and destiny. The decree of heaven was understood as a moral imperative governing for governing bodies as well as individual persons. So heaven would support the emperor as long as the emperor ruled for the greater good. So that's obviously going back to China and the uh, form of government that they had at the time. Destiny, on the other hand, were those aspects of heaven that were beyond human comprehension and affecting things like one's social status, wealth, and the longevity of one's life. These are immutable, 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 blah, 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 blah. <laughs> um, like fate. Um, there is nothing an individual can do to change these circumstances. According to Confucius, once one accepts that destiny cannot be altered, they will then dedicate their life to confronting, conforming to, not confronting, conforming to the decree of heaven and seek only to lead a moral life. So now for the second part, a theory of human nature. Confucius believed that every person has the capacity to live a moral or virtuous life in line with the decree of heaven. However, while all persons are capable of becoming sages, Confucius was noted saying encountering such a person was very rare. Confucius believed that people are malleable as the book puts it. So we start as kind of start out as a type of tabula rasa, so a blank slate. Uh, we all have the same potential. 
many of us will never reach it or do never reach it so there's a difference between those two sentences um so if we're talking about nature versus nurture confucius would likely say that it is nurture part three uh, diagnosis for this so according to analects the reason humanity even during the time from 551 to 479 BCE finds itself in such a state as we frequently still do um one he believes people are attached to profit he says things like the gentleman understands what is moral the small man understands what is profitable b it is shameful to make salary your sole object he believes um actions should be guided for it by morality Two, society lacks respect for feel, filial, so like family, piety. Um, Confucius held a patriarchal view of family, so men are, the, men are the head of the house and all others should obey and that, and this is also like the basis of a good society, so this aligns well with like a monarchy or the emperor, those kinds of governments, which is what they had at this time in China. So the connection between world and actions, oh, this is number three. <laughs> so the connection between wor word, world, word, the connection between word and actions cannot be trusted. So if we cannot trust each other to follow through with something, this leads to a poor basis for community. And four, ignorance regarding the way of the sages prevails. So if people don't know the way of the sages, um, which aligns with the decree of heavens, the ways to live a moral life, um, people are led to misdeeds. And five, um, benevolence is absent from human affairs. Benevolence is the moral perfect. So that is the ultimate way of the sages. However, people cannot achieve benevolence and transit moral perfection without knowing that way of the sages which Confucius believes to be lost within the general population. So for prescription how do we fix all of these ills of human society? Confucius says self-discipline which I think we're going to find is a kind of a common theme throughout some of these videos, um, but not in like a physical discipline or like a work as we view work today discipline. Um, but Confucius, I, I think from my interpretation of what I'm reading is a spiritual discipline. Um, because Confucius believed humans have a tendency to act out of concern for profit, he proposed the Akami. Just kidding. And by that, I mean, that's not really what he said, but he said to do for nothing, quotes, do for nothing. Um, so doing something because it's the right thing to do without the expectation of reward. Righteousness is its own reward, according to Confucius. Since, according to Confucius, there was no chance of changing one's destiny, so things like, again, your social status, the only thing worth pursuing in life is moral integrity and the cultivation of self in general, and also within respect to the what we would call today the nuclear family so according to the text confucius had a very patriarchal view of family which we already went over um and that went into extension his view of society and thus government uh he viewed family as the model for all social interactions and the father is of the authority figure just as the emperor has authority over the government both should be obediently followed with mutually beneficial relationships based on trust where actions match one's words. In terms of ignorance of the part that Confucius viewed as one of the causes of social ills, he suggests that people should dedicate, should be dedicated to learning specifically, learnings specifically, studying the texts referred to as the six classics, which describe, as we've said many times in this video already, the way of the sages. Um, the final solution proposed by Confucius is strict adherence to benevolence because it aligns with the decree of heaven and so also the way of the sages. For him, ignorance is not an excuse for misconduct as the previous 
recommendations stated knowledge and education of the rights uh, which are detailed in those classics that go along with the way of the sages. Um, there are two later developments within Confucianism which address the question con that Confucius never specifically answered, which is, is human nature good or evil? I would say from what I've read, this was actually... Oh look, I already put that. A lot of times I type these things out and then while I'm making this video forget that I typed it out. So here we go. I don't know why in this specific context or in a lot of contexts in our society in general this is presented as binary or like a duality. We are either good or we are bad. So like the answer can only be one or the other. But here we just discussed, I think, um, that Confucius believed that we are both or have the potential to be either. So the next section explains that there was a philosopher called Kao Tzu that said exactly that, that human nature is neither good nor evil. Um, but the book doesn't really get into that. The book really discusses the one philosopher that says good and the one that says bad. So um, Mencius believed that humans are inherently good because a compassionate heart is a gift from heaven and all humans are natural. So all humans are naturally good. However, people can be led astray by selfish desires. On the other hand, there was Sun Tzu who believed people are naturally evil, just like Hobbes and John Locke, who believed that human desires are limitless and need something external to constrain them. And for him, that is the dedication to the internal, to dedication to internalize the rights and the way of the sages. So I really, I'm definitely not an expert on this. This is like what I took from what, like five pages in this book. So if you were like, no, a lot about Confucianism or the way that Confucius uh, thought about humans or human nature, definitely put this in the comments. Uh, share, share the things that live in your brain. I love to hear them. Um, but from that short summary, um, like what do you think? Are humans good or are they evil? Or is this like a reductionist question in the first place? Um, do any of these ideas challenge the way that you view human nature at this point in your life. Also, um, nope, I already said that. If you have more to add, put it in the chat. In the chat. <laughs> in the comments. So, it's very interesting too, like, to see the way that authors, so the authors of this book, not Confucius, but the way authors are talking about Confucianism and Confucius, um, it's really interesting to see how somebody's worldviews impact the way that they portray what they're talking about. So we have this belief that like as humans we're capable of object objectivity, but I don't believe that that's the case and I am sure that as we go through some of these ones that I am more knowledgeable about, um, I will have things to add about the way that the authors of this book, so again that's Leslie Stevenson and David L. Haberman, present these ideologies and I'm sure you don't question this but I will be adding my two cents on that um but that's it for this for this one video video number one of ten well of ten of this book and then uh we'll look at some empirical research after that and that's that's all I got for now Thanks for joining me. If you made it this far, I love you. I think you're wonderful. Uh, go forth and do good things. The judges loves you too.